since I'm not there today, I wanted to walk you through some of the stuff from the Friction Lab, uh, specifically the graphs. Uh, one graph that we made was the force due to friction versus mass, um, which would give you a linear uh, relationship. Um, we're not really going to look at mass, though, because when we look at the mass, we're really looking at the weight or the force due to gravity. The, that the block is um, being pulled down with, which in turn is the normal force that the table was pushing back. So that's really what we're looking at is the interaction between the bottom of the block and the surface that it's resting on. So it's going to be a force due to friction versus normal force graph where you should get two linear lines, um, the higher of which is going to be um, your static friction and the lower one kinetic so we need to analyze this graph so obviously it's going to be a straight line it should be linear if we have good data um, so let's see what the slope would look like so the slope of the line um, is y over x right so force of friction over normal force so what does that equal well nothing um, that we know of as as of yet but let's just do some unit analysis. So we have force due to friction measured in newtons. Normal force also measured in newtons, which cancels out to equal not one, but nothing. So looking at the slopes of these lines, it's just going to be a number. And what do we call just numbers in an equation? We call them coefficients. So what this coefficient is called is mu. The Greek letter mu. Um, and this is known as the coefficient of friction, which again is just a number which you can kind of relate it to be what percentage of your force is going to be lost uh, due to friction, the force that you're trying to move the object with potentially. Um, so that's what I'm looking for you to, to make a statement about the uh, force versus force of friction versus normal force graph. Now, the next graph that we did was force of friction on the surface type. I'm sorry, let's do surface area, which you should have a linear graph, um, a scatter plot with the best fit line. And you should have two lines that are somewhat horizontal. If they're not perfectly horizontal, it's due to error in the lab. Uh, collecting the data or not counting for um, the angled string for when you have the smaller surface area. So yet again, the force of friction is going to be greater for the static part and uh, smaller for the kinetic. So this is just saying that there is no relationship between force of friction and surface area. Therefore, it does not play a role in our um, our equation that we're eventually going to develop. So then lastly, we're going to have our force of friction or surface type. And since there is no direct way to quantify felt versus wood, um, it's going to be a bar graph. However you like to, to make it, if you want to have them overlay um, each other or have them side by side, where the larger ones would be the static and the smaller ones would be the kinetic, where one might be the, the felt and the other one would be the wood. And you can organize that however you like. So lastly, let's go back um, and summarize the lab. So obviously the surface type um, is gonna impact the, the force of friction, but um, at the end of the day, it was only the normal force. So if we analyze this like we did other labs, um, we're trying to develop an equation. So we're looking at a linear type situation. So it's y equals mx plus b. And there would be no b in this case because if there is no normal force, there's going to be no friction because they need to be in contact. So whereas y will be the force due to friction, and being the slope, which we mentioned was called mu, the coefficient of friction, and our x-axis is measuring the normal force. And this is y, 
this was a fun lab. All right, so you can submit the lab hopefully uh, by next class and any questions, please let me know.